younger Michael Jordan in 1998, talking about how impressed he was with a certain newcomer in the basketball scene. I don't believe you going to take care of battle one-on-one. I know, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Kobe. Yeah. He don't let the game come to him. Mm -hmm. no, he just go out there and take Kobe would go on to spend much of his career emulating Michael. In an interview filmed before the player's tragic death in a helicopter crash in late January, Kobe spoke about why he held Michael in such high regard. You know, I truly hate having discussions about who would win one-on-one. -on -one. You're a fan saying, hey, Kobe, you beat Michael one-on-one. -on -one. I feel like, yo, what you get from me is from him. I don't get five championships here without him because he guided me so much and gave me so much great advice. Kobe also said that much of his career, including his five NBA championships, were because of Michael's guidance. I had a question about shooting his turnaround shot. So I asked him about it and you know, he gave me a great detailed answer. But on top of that, he said, if you ever need anything, give me a call. He's like my big brother. Sad time, you know, sad time. Yeah, sad man. Time. Can we can we cheers? Can we cheers yeah, to the sure. yeah, players? Can we for please sure. cheers to the last dance, man? Absolutely. Uh, yes. Absolutely. To Michael and the Bulls in the last dance. So Absolutely. let me ask this. Bron, I want to start with you. I don't know about you, but during the commercials, I may have hit like crossed over nobody, little spin move <laughs> to the fridge, right? Did watching this doc inspire you? Like, man, I, I need to hoop, man. Like, I really want to get after it. What? Absolutely. Watching this doc, I mean, I'm sitting there watching my daughter walk across the room, and she comes close to me, and I give her a little going right hard, <laughs> slap her on the on the on the butt, let her fly <laughs> by, and I and I and I leave that thing, and, and I leave that, I leave it there, I leave it there. We all seen that. I leave it there. You know, she's looking at me like, "What are you doing, Dad?" But you know, it, it's just the moment. That that that, that moment in, in those times, man, that I that I grew up on is something I would never forget. It did it re reinvigorate you in a way like like that that twelve year old LeBron again. Like, damn, this is this is part of the reason you play basketball is because of Michael. No, Jordan. absolutely, absolutely. Like like right now, usually you know, the summertime is when I kind of get extra motivated. And, and the reason I say that is because. Of, you know, yes, we're supposed to be in the playoffs, but I tell them about this is summertime. I get an opportunity to watch my son play. Anything that you learned watching this series? You know, he's sitting there talking to the media and he's talking about being on the pedestal. And Mike's saying, if I'm gonna let someone knock me on the off the pedestal, it's gonna be me. It's not gonna be the media. It's not gonna be anybody else. So you like, damn, you know, Mike wins six in the fashion that he won six, you know, does he go for it again and see if anybody can knock him off that pedestal of being not only the greatest player in the world, but also, uh, you know, the greatest team at that point in time. So, you know, you definitely would have loved to see him go for seven. And it's like, you know, when we watched Mike, when we was watching him in the 98 finals, we like, There's, he's nowhere near washed. And that's the word a lot of people use right now, like washed or, or he's nowhere near to like being on his last leg. can still go. He's still the best player in the world. And I'm watching that in 98 at 14 years of age, like, Wow, Mike's still the best player in the world at 35 years old. He's still gone. He's still the best player in the world. And Mike's still the best player in the world at 35 years old. Bron, I want, I want to bring you back to, a, a, you recently tweeted um, that when MJ retired in 93, nine-year-old LeBron. Man, I was nine. <laughs> Talk about that a little bit, man. What, what his retirement in 93 meant to you and how it, it may have impacted you if in any way. Man, I'm smiling now, but I wasn't back in 93. Um, Michael Jordan was kind of like that God. He was that 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 angel sent from heaven that, that I kind of used him to help me get through some of the darkest days that I had. Even at, people say, well, you're only nine years old, but you know, there's a lot of dark days, you know, when you grow up the way I grew up and, and, and you're part of a single parent household. So, you know, every other day, if I got an opportunity on WGN to watch Mike, it gave me another boost of life. You know, it made me feel that I can make it out of this situation. And when he decided to, you know, give it up after winning that third title versus Phoenix, I felt like, what can I do? I, I don't know what to do. And, 
and, I, and, I'm, and I'm losing words right now thinking about it again. It's kind of resurfacing me as a nine year old. I'm like, okay, without Mike, what do I do now? Who, who, who is going to be my inspiration? And that brought tears to my eyes. Yeah, because like when you when you when you have when you're a nine year old kid and you need inspiration from someone, they become your father, which I needed. They become your brother. They become your teammate. They become your pastor. They become your superhero. You know, it's like Batman and Michael Jordan for me when I was growing up. <laughs> Those are the two best superheroes in the world. And and I even remember the cartoon, uh, what's it called? The All-Stars Mad with him, yeah, Wayne Gretzky, yeah, yeah. Bo, Bo Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah, like I, re I remember that too, man. It was like one of my All-Stars is gone. Like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, so, you know, they become everything in your household. And it's definitely something that's unfair to that particular athlete. But as a, as a nine year old, that's all I knew. So we, we, we didn't have the inside track on, you know, what was the real reason that, that he was giving it up. We just, I feel like, you know, maybe I should give up too. I believe 2001 is the year you met MJ and it was in Chicago. Um, talk about what that experience was like, please. Bro, you have no idea, man. Um, it's two things. It's two people that I've met in my life that's changed my day, changed my life. Me and my wife that I've been with since uh, since 2002. And when I met Michael Jordan in 2001, you know what? Let me throw Jay Z on there too, because that that was a huge moment for me too. But when I met Michael Jordan for the first time, I literally couldn't believe it was him. I couldn't believe it. Like people, you know, I felt. The dude looked like Jesus Christ to me. <laughs> he looked like black Jesus. He looked, you know, he was black Jesus to me. Nobody could tell me anything different. When I walked, I was in Chicago, Maverick and I and our good friend G, we, they take us to hoops, I'm going there. And before they play, they say, Mike always, you know, used to lift before they play. I have another story. So we walk upstairs. And nobody told me that Mike lift before he played. I don't know anything about lifting right now. I'm, I'm a high school sophomore. I don't know anything about lifting. Um, we walk up there, and the first person I see is Charles Oakley. You know, Oak being from Cleveland, dapped him up. I had seen Oak around the city a few times, you know. And Oak move, and when he moves, Mike is sitting on the bench press. Um, and I was like, oh my God. I was, I didn't think he was real, man. You don't understand. I didn't think Michael Jordan was real. I only thought he lived in the TV, either in games or commercials or come fly with me on cassette tapes. Wow, yeah. I didn't think he was real. And when I saw him, I was like, if, if the man above would have took me that day, I would have lived a hell of a life, I swear to God. <laughs> so, so this is your sophomore year in high school, correct? It's my sophomore year, yep. Sophomore. Sophomore year, 2001, you're on the court with him. What's, I mean, what's that experience like? I mean, you're on the court with, you know, Black Jesus, as you said. Do you remember anything yeah. about that run? Yeah, him and Antoine Walker was talking so much <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. You know, so for me to be on the court, you know, at 16 years old, sophomore in high school with, you know, you know, my favorite player of all time, man, it was like, this, this can't be real, man. If you pinch me, man, I was like, please, I hope I don't wake up. <laughs> 